This is a pre-recorded fast cast of Engine Room Define Phase Tools by Morseam.com. If you want to jump to any particular part of the program, you can use the audio-visual table of contents here. All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining uh, Morseam.com's third fast cast. Today, we'll be talking about Define Phase Tools. Uh, my name is Gabe Turk. I'm the Retail Accounts Marketing Manager at Morseam. Um, and I just uh, want to make a quick note. There's a question box in the uh, in the sidebar for GoToWebinar. If you have any questions during the FastCast, uh, feel free to type it in at any time, uh, and we'll get to those questions at the end of the first 15 minutes. Uh, so, uh, again, we'll be going over the Define Phase tools. I'm just going to hop into Engine Room for us right now, and we'll get started. Um, one thing to note, maybe two things to note. Um, Today we'll be talking about the Define Phase tools that are in our dropdown. We may not touch on all of the tools, um, but they do share similar functionalities between them all. Um, some of them may conventionally have some overflow into measure, but uh, for the lion's share, we're just talking about this dropdown. And to frame everything we're talking about, uh, I'm framing it into uh, it, within a, a pizza shop. It's called Girolamo's Pizza Shop. It was the first place I ever worked when I was uh, 15, so I thought it might be a kind of different example we could use to um, frame all of these define phase tools. So uh, the first tool we're going to open up into is the project charter. Uh, you can find the project charter using the define menu or you can go into search to find it. Um, but what I've done is already created one for us so I'm just going to open that up out of the sidebar here on the right. So with this project charter you're going to see that there are different headings within all the different uh, places where we can type within this charter. Um, I've left all of the standard headings that come with our project charter, um, and I've added some notes as well. In terms of functionality, uh, there are only really a few things to mention about this tool. The first is, uh, we understand that people might have used different project charters at different companies, or maybe you have different names um, for some of the different titles. So what we've done is made all of these fields editable. So in the light blue, if you double click in any of them, you'll see that I'll be able to change the name. So maybe if I didn't want to call it a project charter, or maybe in the product project charter template that my company uses, we don't put the project name in the top left, we put it somewhere else. So maybe you would put um, something else here. Um, also, we'll be able to adjust any of these uh, areas here. So whether it's vertical or horizontal, you'll see that I'll get this little cursor where I can adjust the size, the width, the heights of all of my boxes. Uh, the ability to edit these headers extends to every single header, even as you go all the way down to the bottom of your project charters. Uh, and that brings me to the next point that I want to mention. Let's say that when we talked about our expected business benefits uh, for a project charter, perhaps we didn't want to talk about compliance, or maybe that doesn't apply to our project or our company. Uh, one thing that you might do to help manipulate this project charter to fit your needs is select the compliance area, delete the text, and then just simply use the height adjuster to make it just look like this very small bar almost not even noticeable. Um, also, aside from the blue areas where you can type, you can do the exact same thing. As you've seen, I've typed in some information in the, the white boxes here. So for project description and mission, I can type my mission in here. Um, it's a great tool to use if you're ready to finalize your project charter, and it's also really good to use if you're trying to draft a project charter. Uh, perhaps you would want to save your iterations of your project charter by typing into the top left, draft. So that way, once I X out of my project charter, and then I go to find it later in my studies on the right, I'll be able to differentiate my draft pizza project charter from maybe some other project charters that I've created. And that's the long and short of that tool. Uh, the next thing I'm going to move into is our affinity diagram. And I'm also going to show you some functionality that exists from a project progression standpoint. A lot of our tools uh, will allow you to take the work that you've already done and uh, apply them to other tools. So uh, what I've done is created an affinity diagram based on our pizza company, Girolamos. 
So let's pretend that all the employees got together and we started talking about different things that we've heard from customers and different complaints we have within our company. Uh, and we just started writing all of those things down. Well, if we wanted to add something new, say another employee has something else to mention, I can just click and drag a note into this workspace area, double click in that area to type a new note. Uh, let's say that the thing that we heard was that the phone systems uh, are bad at that particular location. Um, another way that we could add a note, aside from using this uh, click and drag uh, functionality, is by hitting the add note box here. Let's say another thing that we heard was that the delivery vehicle we had is uh, very slow. And it's old. I can start typing and hit enter, and you'll see here that a new note is automatically created for me. So as you would with an uh, affinity diagram, we might want to start to categorize all these different pieces of feedback that we got into categories. So I'm going to click and drag my categories box. Click that box once and you'll see it'll highlight in yellow. Take the bottom cursor and make it a little bit larger. And what I can do is click and drag these different notes and put them into this labeling area. So um, let's say that this particular thing that we're talking about is the delivery system. So we'll say what applies to that? Well, we'll say the phone. Uh, there's some other mentions here of delivery. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Okay, and uh, we want to add another category. Let's say something to do with our orders. I'm going to click and drag again a new category. Move it out of this workspace so I can adjust it. And let's change the label to orders. So let's see here, there's a couple of things here that have to do with the ordering. So we can put this in here. Let's make sure we have the phone system as part of that. Just to make this look more even, let's do this. Okay, um, so we'll just kind of stop at these two categories, but you can create, create as many as you'd like. And if you needed to add more space to your work area, you'll see that I have this little glove icon. I can take the glove by clicking and dragging, and I can exp expand my workspace. Um, so typically in Define, you might go from an affinity diagram to a critical to quality chart. So what I can hit is new CTQC diagram. And you'll see that a new tool is automatically going to open up for me. I'll X out of the affinity diagram so we can keep our workspace kind of clean. So here in our CTQC diagram, you'll see the delivery system and orders automatically populated from our affinity diagram uh, categories that we had created. Also, Pizza Affinity was the name of that affinity diagram, so the need is going to uh, come over. But if we ever wanted to edit any of these fields, we can just double click and start typing again. Uh, if we wanted to add any areas here or delete them, it's important that you click a space first and then make a modification. So in the instance of this critical to quality diagram, if I click uh, this CTQC area here, and let's say I want to add another piece to it, I can click new CTQC, and the connection is going to be drawn because I selected that last. Uh, likewise, if I needed another CTQC in this row, I would click the driver that I'm interested in, hit new CTQC, and then populate it here. The same works for deletions too, so if I want to delete one of these things, it's important that you click the one you want to delete, and then delete it. Um, also, from a term of, uh, in the terms of cascading tools, the way that they all fit together, if I were to enter information into these critical quality uh, areas here, what I can do next is push this information to a QFD or to a cause and effect matrix. And just like it did with our affinity to CTQC, it's going to carry over all the information that we typed. So you'll see here I just typed in some gibberish into the CTQCs, but they carried over to our outputs here. This tool will be covered later on uh, when we talk about the uh, measure dropdown. I'll X out of those tools. The next thing I'm going to go into is a uh, process flowchart, which I'll open up for us. Uh, I could again go through this define, or I could go to search to get to it, but I could also open it up if I've opened it up before. Within this tool, it's going to have the same kind of click and drag functionality that we've seen in the affinity diagram but there are going to be a couple of other things I want to mention. So here I've got a couple of steps within the pizza shop mentioned. Tom takes an order, 
what does he do next? Is it a pickup or is it delivery? Um, so if it's a pickup, we go to this next step. Now let's say I need to add a step after this. I'll add a step by clicking and dragging it off of the shapes area. Click that area so that it becomes uh, highlighted in yellow. Adjust the size with the bottom cursor square. And then I can make a connection using the nodes that are on the sides of these shapes. If I want to add any kind of note within this process step, I can double click and start typing inside of the box. Uh, or if I wanted to add a title or a note at the bottom of it, I can click the new note area and type below. If we wanted to modify any of the color or sizes um, of our lines or uh, of our process steps, what I can do is click the box I'm interested in twice. And you'll see that I get this option here for border color, fill color, and I can delete it. Uh, border color, as the name suggests, will add some kind of color on the shape of the process step. Um, and fill color will fill in the inside of the box. If I wanted to change what kind of lines are connecting these process steps, I can click the line itself and choose from a host of different options. So if it's a lightning, I can do that. I'll click it again. Maybe I want to make it dashed. Or if I want to just make this one dashed, I can do that. So there's plenty of options there. If you need some more text options within your process chart, uh, flowchart, what you can do is take annotations, click it and drag it, and place it in the area that you want to have that note. Start typing. If we wanted to add swim lanes, we could do the exact same thing by clicking and dragging. We can also add containers if we needed to, similar to the way that we added categories in the affinity diagram. Obviously, you wouldn't use these swim lanes and these categories like that, but just to show the functionality. All right, so I'm going to close out of that. And the next tool I'm going to go into is our SIPOC tool. So I'll click SIPOC. And you'll see here, uh, we've got pieces of the process kind of laid out. So here you have our suppliers, our inputs, our process, outputs, and customers. Um, in the same way that you made connections to different steps with the past two tools that we've looked at, um, you can do the same thing here. So let's say I need to add a new input uh, because something else is going to connect to the supplier of patron. If I click the plus button, you'll see a new one uh, is going to appear here, and there'll be a node where I can connect to. Uh, I can also change the color, and the, uh, the fill color, and the border color as well. Um, also, if I needed to work the other way around, attaching uh, the supplier, like I said, to another input, you're just going to click once on the box you want to start on, and then make your connection from there. If any of these are something that I want to get rid of, I can click them once. I can hit the delete key, not the backspace key, on my keyboard, or uh, I can hit the delete from the dropdown. I'll X out of that. Uh, the next tool I'll go into really quickly is Racy Matrix. Again, you can find it through this defined uh, dropdown, but I've already got it open for us. Here I've laid out some of the people uh, that work at our company. Uh, what their actions and uh, or tasks are, who's responsible, who's accountable, consulted, and infer informed. Um, so within this, if we need to add any rows other than the standard rows that appear for us, we can hit the Add Row button, and you'll notice that at the bottom, it's going to extend each of these areas. Also, just like in our project charter, if I wanted to change the order of these, uh, or maybe we use a different word for uh, responsible, uh, you can click in that area and change the name. The next tool I'm going to go into is the value stream mapping tool. I'll click out of this and open it up from my sidebar. We'll see here I've just added a couple of shapes. Um, this is going to work a lot like the process mapping tool. Uh, in the same way, I can take different shapes uh, for the process, click them and drag them. I can also change their size. Um, you can also add containers for enhanced note taking. Um, and you can also add timelines. So I'm going to specifically show you how you can adjust your timelines and make them as it's a question that we get frequently. Um, so if I take a timeline, I'm going to click it and drag it and add it here. 
Uh, you'll get a little pop-up when you cursor over it on the screen, um, but I'll just show you what you can do. So as we can see that I can move this up and down, I can also click to make a valley. If I wanted to widen that valley, I can just find the uh, vertical line that connects to the rest of the timeline and adjust it. And I can do that throughout the rest of this chart. Um, if I needed to add different time segments, let's say, in these particular valleys, what I would do is take my, use my annotations tool, click and drag the T, and start typing. And that's a good way that you'll be able to represent uh, the time within that. Um, also, if there are other aspects of these tools that you pull out from the shapes area that you find that you need to type somewhere else or add some typing to them, uh, you can always use this annotation button. So, um, and again, any of these colors can be changed, and uh, you can also change the way that they're connected. Uh, so that is my 15 minutes. I, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, we have a couple of questions here, so I will answer those in order. Um, but um, I will be distributing a YouTube, as I have for the past two, uh, link to everyone so that you can watch this FastCast again. Um, and stay tuned for an invite for the fourth FastCast, which will be coming up uh, after the holidays in January. So again, thank you for joining, and let's get into these questions.